We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Five minutes. 8 o'clock, 72 degrees here at WOCA. Thank you for tuning in. There is a 50% chance we'll see rain today, so I guess just keep that in mind. Galen Newnold is on the phone from Life South Community Blood Center to remind us of the important mission that we all have to make sure that lives are saved simply by making sure there's a supply of blood. Yes. And they take care of it. You just have to lay down. They do the mm. rest, right, Galen? <laughs> good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning. Larry, Robin, how are y'all? Good. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in the rain uh, taking my son to school. So, oh, it's uh, raining where you I, are. I have found that rain. It's 100% where I'm at. Oh, okay. Are you, but you're still in Ocala? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. For the moment. It is not raining here at the paddock mall, just to let you no. know. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. Hey, I, you know, I, I, you, you guys were talking about the, uh, the South China Sea earlier today, and um, I spent a lot of quality time there back in the late 80s and early 90s and i will tell you since we shut down the the military bases in the philippines uh-huh. China just continue to expand their strength in that area so uh i'm not shocked by that at all what i am shocked by is you know the filipinos kicked us out because they didn't think we needed to be there anymore now whenever we come back they're always they always open the, you know they're they hope they welcome us with open arms and if we would have not closed that base back in 1991 um, China would have never built the, the huge masses of pieces of land that they did uh, to, to do nothing more than just create a presence in the South China Sea. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah the, the, the story was, uh, I mean, you can tell where the, the confusion comes from. They're all saying they own these islands, the Philippines, China, that's Taiwan, right. Taiwan, Vietnam. They all say, <laughs> oh, that's mine, no, that's mine, that's mine. Mm-hmm. They, they haven't well, you, you know, the thing is, is, is that there's this chain of islands that are basically inhabitable um but what it does is it it, it there makes your country a little bit bigger and therefore you you have a larger protective you know area around you and uh the Phil- the, the philippines are worried about it because it's encroaching now on china and if you're the philippines you've been run by almost every country on the planet at some point in time right, you've been right. occupied by them Mm-hmm. You know, from the Spanish, the French, the the Japanese, I mean, the Koreans. So, you know, they they have a right to be a little bit worried about, you know, people being really close to their country so they don't get overrun. Uh, over the past uh, 18 months, China has built over 2,000 acres of artificial islands. Yeah. yeah wow. It, it's pretty amazing. And, wow. you know, if you, all you have to do... Because um, uh, again, we I have a lot of friends who either still live in the Philippines or are married to Filipinos from from my Navy days, and so I got this link, and it showed Google Earth uh, five years ago to today, uh-huh. and you can literally see the land that they're building. Really? Uh, oh wow! You know, uh, yeah. So it's it's it is it is a real issue. And I, I'm glad the U.S. has finally decided to respond in some way instead of just kind of wagging their finger at the Chinese. Because that just doesn't work, by the way. They, they're not afraid of us in any way, shape, or form. So. Hmm, hmm. Uh, it is interesting, and, it, and it's a part of the world news that, that kind of was under the radar for most people anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's a... And, and then again, you could argue and, and that, you know, what there's no... You know there are no real American interests in the Philipp- in that area of the world, other than the Philippines and protecting the Filipino sovereignty. Well, uh, so and and the yeah. trade route. It's not it's not the destination. It's the it's the route to get to the destination that is our interest. In my, yes. Yeah, my understanding is is that the the Chinese are not uh, worried about trading ships because that's actually they're coming from China for the most part to the western world so they want those trade routes open they're not they're not even thinking about closing the trade routes what they want to be able to do is just expand their footprint and uh and expand their their area of of influence that's why they built the island hmm. well keep an eye on all that they've been doing with uh you know with the with the you know the the koreans they have the same issue with with them so it, it, this isn't anything new for China yeah uh, 
it's U.S. Navy Day today. Oh, yes, today is <clears throat> U- National U.S. Navy Day, so we salute and, and thank right. you, Galen. Yes. Well, you are welcome. The thank United you, States Navy, Galen. yes. It is a day to salute all the women and men who serve or have served in the U.S. Navy. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, real quickly, uh, and the, the one casualty at that rescue mission, Joshua Wheeler was 39 years old. Yeah. Did you know he was a Cherokee? Uh, I did not, no. It says Joshua Wheeler, 39-year-old Cherokee warrior, the latest American lost in the fog of the Second Gosh. Iraq War. The Second Iraq War. The Second. <laughs> wow. It is. I mean, you know, the first one was in 90. So, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Mm, that's too bad. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, it's sad. And it was combat. I don't care what anybody says. But I understood the argument. I understood the, the legal yeah, yeah, the point that Mark was trying to make. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He did a good job with that. All right. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, that's absolutely... Uh, I mean, he gets the, uh, they get the star and everything. That's definitely dying in battle. So, um, I do have something silly to talk about, but we don't have to. I see the phone okay. ringing. Maybe we should just stick on this topic. Before we, before we do anything, let me ask you how the blood supply is. Well, I'll tell you right now, uh, we need, uh, this is going to be a broken record probably for the next couple of weeks, but we need O negative and we need apheresis donors. And uh, we also need any RH negative donor. So if you're an A neg or a B neg, uh, Larry, um, you know, or you're going to B pause, we'll take it. I'm a B pause. Yes, I'm an A neg. I know it. B positive. I, I like I, the I whole calling, expression. I just wanted to make sure that I covered both of you guys. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we do that. And, and make sure you thank Penn Flooring. Go over there and, and see yes. some of the flooring they have. They are definitely making this possible. That's why we thank them. They sponsored this segment with Kalen. They have some beautiful flooring over there, and that's what we want to direct you to right now. If you're thinking about remodeling your home, don't forget the floor and mm-hmm. check out some of the samples they have over there. Their showroom is at 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the McKay Williams Bridge. Mm-hmm. which is the bridge that crosses the railroad tracks just a few blocks from Pine Avenue on 17th Street. Uh, yep. And also thank the folks over at Palm Garden. They are advertising right now that on Saturday on Halloween, you can take the children there for a safe trick-or-treating experience. Mm-hmm. Not only will the kids have fun, but the folks who live there who sometimes don't ever get out of there because yes. that's just the nature of that, that life. Um, you will brighten their days just by bringing your little mm-hmm. beautiful children uh, to walk through their halls collecting candy. And, and I'm sure there's plenty of Kit Kats. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I, I know some of the old people like circus peanuts. Uh-huh. Uh, they're okay. <laughs> yeah. But I I'll also happen to know they like Kit Kats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to buy Kit Kats and Circus Peanuts. I don't uh-huh. know why those were the two popular ones. But. <laughs> All right, let me. That's that's too. That's a lot of in-depth research. Right there, like. <laughs> <laughs> I did three years of research on that topic. Yes, you did. Three years. You were good. I went I'm to the a, store uh, quite. I'm a Reese's Peanut Butter Cups guy. So. Uh, oh yes. Well, you're a different generation. <laughs> yeah. I think. I oh, think. Is that what it is? What about it? Okay. Is it, but a Hershey Kiss is universal. I would think so, but you have to remember the teeth. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, there, you, can, you can suck on a Hershey kiss. You can suck on a Hershey kiss, yes. Yeah, you could do that. Yes, you can suck on anything pretty much. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, no, I don't bite into a Hershey kisses. I didn't know you were supposed to fight it. I don't. I, I don't. Well, no, you have to savor them. I'm just trying to tell you. To savor them. Good the oh, that's, a, that's a fair comment. I, you're saying, generally speaking, don't buy anything that that you have to bite into. Like oh. Snickers bar. When I worked at the assisted living facility, mm-hmm. and they yes. would send me yes. to the store, they would say, "Oh, by the way, when you're there, would you pick me up some Depends? Would you pick me up some cranberry right? juice? Yes. Would you pick me up yeah. some Kit Kat bars? Yes. Or right. circus peanuts? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know what circus peanuts are. Yeah, you do. That's those orange marshmallowy things. <laughs> Oh, those things are horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? Generation. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, it's a generation. talking about candy, the, the worst candy ever made is, is candy corn. I know I offended a large portion of your audience, <laughs> but there are hideous, they are, they are nasty, and they shouldn't be consumed. <laughs> Going out on that note, Larry. Unless they're brock. I will, I will say this. <laughs> that we, we bought some candy corn like last week. Yes. And I thought, I'm oh gosh. in the mic. I thought, I haven't had this in a while. This is mm-hmm. going to be good. And the first few pieces were really no, good. Not. 
Hold on. No. The first few pieces, it was. it's kind of like a funnel cake for me. The first bite or two is good. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a, that's a good description. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, hold, funnel cake. Hold on. The thing is that you get a... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> the weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. Clouds and a few intervals of sun today with a couple of showers, even a thunderstorm in spots, the high 80 to 84. It'll be mostly cloudy tonight with a passing shower or two, but mainly dry along the coast, below 70 to 74. For tomorrow, intervals of clouds and sunshine with a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon, the high 82 to 86. And for Thursday, partly sunny, high 81 to 85. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Palm Garden of Ocala is offering a safe and fun environment for your children to trick or treat on Halloween. Come with your children dressed up in their costumes to Palm Garden, located at 2700 Southwest 34th Street. Our family will get a kick out of doling out Halloween candy to your family. Trick or treating will be held between 5.30 and 7 p.m. No reservations are necessary, so plan to stop by Palm Garden on Saturday, October 31st, Halloween Day, and have a ghoulish good time. 18 minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Galen Newnold is on the phone from Life South Community Blood Center. We're kind of talking about everything under the sun. Uh, and we do have a phone call. Somebody waiting patiently. Galen, good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, being that it's whatever it is, kind of Navy commemorative day, um, I think we ought to remember Angela Simone Santos, who was uh, a victim of the Naples uh, USO bombing back in the uh, the 80s. All right. Let's remember her. Absolutely. And um, a, a great Navy movie. Uh, it's not a lot of uh, shell fire and shot, but it's, uh, it's the story of Admiral Halsey, The Gallant Hours. It's one of those great command decision movies. All right. Recommendation uh, for a movie. Day. Thank you. Appreciate the waiting to tell us that. <laughs> I've uh, seen that movie like 17 times. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the five movies they always played on board ship when I was there. Oh, really? Oh, wow. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's like must-watch, I guess, for if you're in the military. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, Larry and Robin and Galen, uh, Stu Galen from a Marine to a Sailor. Are you familiar with the USS Liberty incident? Hmm. Galen, do you know about it? The USS Liberty incident? No. Mm -mm. No. Uh, Galen, if you get a chance, uh, I'd appreciate uh, uh, the USS Liberty, uh, I think it's .com or .org, but uh, uh, back in the uh, early 60s, uh, an American um, surveillance ship was off the coast of uh, Egypt and legal waters was attacked by uh, 
a couple of Israeli jets, uh, the Americans could see the Star of David, were confused they were being shot at, so they ran out hmm. under fire and hoisted the American flag, of which that flag still exists. It has over 21 uh, bullet holes in it, uh, machine gun caliber, large caliber machine gun holes in it. About 45 American sailors died that day, and over 100 were severely wounded. And uh, it was an attack um, orchestrated behind the back of uh, the backs of Americans in order to fool us into thinking that Egypt had sunk the ship, and in fact Israel uh, had done it for us so we could uh, send my Marines into Egypt because they just nationalized their oil. We want to keep that on the world market. But very sad story. I have much respect for the Navy, and uh, I like uh, all the presidents that have naval affiliations from Kennedy to Carter and, and, uh, and, uh, and others, including yourself, Caleb. Have a great day. All right. Thank you for I that. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I will tell you that, uh, you know, the USS Cole, which was attacked by a terrorist, that was a, that was a, that was a really, really big deal back in, you know, in 2000. Right, um, right. You know, there's been, there's been a couple of those kinds of terrorist attacks and, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's sad, but um, yeah, today's a good day to remember all of those. I mean, you go, you think back to Pearl Harbor, you think back to Midway, and uh, and, and going all the way back. So it, it's a uh, yeah, those are those are great things to remember, and let, hopefully we can learn from some of these mistakes that we keep making. There you go. Uh, yeah, and we, the, the tail often wags the dog in this world. It seems like we mm-hmm. get we get taken t- t- taken by the lead, I guess, in the wrong direction and. Anyway, so it's it's Navy yeah. Day. Navy Day observed on October twenty yeah, seventh. I, I didn't know that. Did you ever go as, for Halloween as a, as a sailor when you were a kid? Did you ever dress up like a sailor and, no. and go trick or treat? No, no. no I, 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 you know why I joined the Navy, right? No, no. Because I, there, there, I, okay, I, there was no way I was going to college, right? There was just no way I was going to college, and uh, you know, and I went and. And the, the Navy recruiter said this. He goes, you know what? In the Navy, you always have a bed to sleep in. I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. I'm in. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a true story. And it didn't hurt that I had just seen, like, Top Gun, you know. Oh. So, which, which, let's be honest, those are so, those are, that, that's one of the greatest recruiting tools of all time. You know? Yes. But, um, yeah, that's, that's why I joined the Navy, because the, cause the recruiter said, you'll always have a bed. He didn't. I didn't even ask what you know, like what I would do or anything. I'm like, well, I'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, so like what, how bad can it be? So what was it? <laughs> That's crazy. What was that? Oh, there's your little doggy. That's a dog. Was that a dog or an alarm? No, it's my dog. I had to walk back in. I forgot something at the house. That's a um, dog. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is that a dog? Yeah, she just. Okay. Yeah, she acts like an idiot when I walk. <laughs> well, she loves you. Uh, so, yeah. what was it about the movie that that um, uh, that was such a recruiting tool? Did you did you see Top Gun? Yes. All right. Well, there was like every part of it from the chicks from the chicks. Know, oh, see, I knew that would be number taken one. Off of, yeah. the, taken off, taken off of an aircraft carrier, okay. and then how cool all the people looked, you know, while they were on the board the ship. What was the what was the yeah, bran- what was cool. the branch of service from the officer and a gentleman? Was that the Navy? That was a that was the Marine Corps. That was Marines. Uh, if I remember correctly, Marine Corps officer training. Okay, was so, it, I think that yeah. was a recruiting tool too. Yeah. Because every guy wanted to be the guy in the white suit that sweeps the girl off the f- off, off the feet. floor, yeah, off yeah. her feet. Well, and and, and in, then in the he factory. was in the navy. He was the navy, but I I don't was it navy officers training then? I, I think I, so. I remember that scene, but the but the officers in the Marines don't wear white. I, so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the navy. Hmm. I think it was. You ever think that's the intent? I mean, do you think movies are made ever with that intent? I mean, no, no, no. I think they just sell. I mean, I, I think that people go and watch them because, uh, you know, the one thing that war gives you, it gives you a, a bad guy. It gives you an opportunity to overcome the bad guy, and it gives you an opportunity to, you know, to to get the to girl persevere against against uh, all odds. And of course, it's an easy love story, isn't it? So. That's right. Mm. Exactly. You know what's interesting? When, uh, t- today is uh, is Bruce Mozart's um, memorial service. Yes. 
and four o'clock. And, and, four yeah. o'clock. And, and I was looking at some of the things. Bruce was a World War II vet. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and pretty much all these guys, and not just World War II, but all the guys that come in on the veteran show, they, it, it never comes up of what they did. It never comes up. I mean, everything else comes up. The things they're doing now, the pancakes, the, the, the fish fries, you know, all, mm-hmm. all the things they do. But it never, ever comes up. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Because Sergeant Curley, for example, is an yeah. example. Uh, Sergeant James Curley, he was wounded, like, I think, twice. Shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. There was another guy who used to come in here. I think he has since passed away, but he uh, he had a metal plate in his head. Yeah. And you, know, you would never know it. And it was, and was from war. It was from a severe mm-hmm. a severe injury in the war. Don Harrison, the guy who died on the motorcycle wreck. Yeah. Um, when he was alive, obviously, he was he would talk... Hard and never. Other people would tell you, "Oh gosh, he was, he was blown apart in the in uh, Vietnam." Yeah, exactly. And put and put back together. But yeah, never came up. Just one of those. It's just an amazing thing that it never ever comes up. So. They're humble. They they don't want to you know you burden know, I, people. I, I will tell you this: when I'm uh, when I do talk to my Navy buddies, we never talk about anything that we did. We always talk about the stories that we had off the ship or stories about one another that happened on the ship. But they were. You know, they were never about, you know, when the SEAL team was with us or, you know, any anything we did when we went to China or anything like that. So it, it, it doesn't shock me at all. So, yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. The, do you think your service in the Navy affects how you vote? Your experience? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, too often... Um, Foreign policy is downplayed in all of these elections and in and, and all the debates. And, and what this is what this, this is my view. It's really, really impossible for you to make a decision without knowing all the facts, right? I, I mean, and, and, right. and let, let's just take President Obama as an example. And I, by no way am I, as I am I making dispersions, but he had a certain idea of what about Iraq when he started. I think he made that very clear. I think when he got in office, he's like, and he finally got all the information. I think it changed a little bit of his view. And uh, and I think that's why we still have troops there. And I think that's still why Guantanamo is open, uh, even though he still talks about closing it. I think the reality that comes in there and says, wait a second, this is a whole lot bigger than I ever imagined. Mm, yeah, you're I think probably right. that comes into play. And and, and and I don't think, I, I just wish one politician would come out and say, you know what, I don't know the answer to right, right. how I would respond right. to what we're doing in China, because guess what, I'm not in those briefings. I'm not with the intelligence communities and the, and the Department of State who are explaining the situation with so much more detail than than any news agency, I don't care if it's Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, they're going to give you the real story, and uh, then you're allowed to make a decision. But uh, yeah, too often we, we think that everything's cut and dry, and, and in foreign policy it is not. And, well, and absolutely, yeah. Are reaching, and that's the other thing I, I learned is that you make a decision today, and 20 years ago that same decision comes back to bite you in, in the butt. I mean, you look at us coming out, getting, you know, when they didn't renew our military base in the Philippines. Um, Dick Cheney slept on my ship when he was negotiating that deal with the Filipinos. He, he would fly from Tubic Bay to Manila every day because that was the only place he felt safe was on board a U.S. ship. Wow. Um, so he stayed on our boat for a week. Um, and, and then, you know, he... It, so. That's that's an example of that's a decision that's now coming back to impact the the, the world, and, and so in that that regard, I think it definitely impacts my vote, absolutely. Hmm. And how we treat the military, it definitely impacts our, our, our my vote. Well, and and just if I could throw my two cents in, I think when you listen to those who are very very conservative or very, very liberal, it's the same thing. Neither one of them really knows what it's going to be like if they actually get that job. Mm -hmm. And and then, as you pointed out, when they get that job, that's when reality hits them because now they have the advisors from all sides telling them the real real truth. Right. The real truth. Absolutely. And and I don't know if you could be prepared for that job to to understand the foreign policy unless you're the Secretary of State or the Vice President. You know, or you're really inside that. That's a really good point, Um, yeah. 
And I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think Jeb Bush has probably a better understanding of it. And Hillary Clinton has a better understanding of it, just because they have their father and their They've brother and their yeah. husband yeah. That, that have lived that. Twenty seconds, um, Galen. Where, where's but, the Where's the Bloodmobile? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bloodmobile today, Larry, is actually at the um, Walmart in uh, the stores. So. Oh, okay. Well, go through the go through the day knowing that we're proud of you every day, but today especially because it's uh, Na- it's Navy Day. So. Yes, it is. Thank you, Galen. Hey, it, was, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. All right, so. we'll talk yeah, to you tomorrow. I about it. All right. All right. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye all. Ooh, there's been a late night house deal in D.C. on a very divisive issue. House leaders unveiled a two-year budget agreement with the Obama administration aimed at preventing a debt crisis and a partial government shutdown. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland in Washington. Republican Darrell Issa said it was important to strike an agreement before Paul Ryan.